Greetings. Uh, I made a video about three years ago on how I cured my hormonal acne naturally. I promised to make an update and here I am. I have to sincerely apologize to anybody who had to sit through that first video. I really was an 18 year old edgelord at the time. Not that I'm much different, but yeah. So the amount of information in this video is going to make it inevitably quite lengthy. Um, so what I'm going to do is leave a link to a Google document if you want to refer back to any information. Um, but you don't want to sit through watching it again. And I'm also going to include timestamps. Okay, so before we begin, I need to preface this with a couple things. Number one, I'm not a medical professional, so please take everything I'm saying here with a grain of salt. I do not know what's wrong with your body. I do not know what's wrong with your hormones. I cannot diagnose you. I would recommend just using this for information, maybe as a stepping stone guide. Number two, I am not this hippie vegan anti-medicine type person who believes that drinking forest cat piss is going to cure cancer. The reason why I'm going to be emphasizing so much on natural solutions is because I, I believe on the grand scale of medical issues, acne is, you know, a relatively minor issue and doesn't really require heavy medication that can cause long-term damage to your body. So here's the rundown of my hormonal acne. When I was about 16 or 17, I had some minor acne and I had convinced myself it was hormonal and it's very possible it was. So I just looked up supplements to help balance my hormones and I came across Vitex. So I started taking Vitex and within, you know, even just one to two weeks, my skin became ravaged. Um, I took it for maybe about three weeks and um, even after I was off of it weeks after weeks I was still getting really bad at acne. If you're wondering why I didn't stop taking it it's because I had the mindset it's gonna get worse before it gets better which when it comes to stuff like this is not really true. So because supplements are not prescription medication and they don't have the same regulations um, when you are searching for supplements, you know, you'll find that they will not really tell you what it does, that they're under no legal obligation to do that. So they're going to have something vague like, oh, helps, you know, fertility, it helps immunity, whatever. So when you are looking for supplements, you need to really do research on what they do to your body and specifically hormonal supplements, you need to find out which hormones in your body it's going to affect. So I later found out that Vitex is commonly recommended for biological females who are just getting off of birth control and they have an imbalance of hormones and the vitex helps to you know get them fertile again if you don't know how birth control works let me give you a short rundown most hormonal birth control methods work by providing your body with synthetic estrogen and progestion i don't know how to pronounce that sorry you already have these natural in your body but birth control works by changing the levels of natural hormones and prevents a female's body from releasing an egg during ovulation. Birth control suppresses LH and FSH, which are hormones that are vital to being fertile. Vitex works by supposedly lowering the levels of prolactin, which helps rebalance other hormones, including estrogen and progesterone. So I didn't get my hormones tested before taking Vitex, which I should have, um, but I was a minor at the time when, you know, it's double the work to go about doing that. In my, I would have needed my mother to do it. Um, but after about i would say maybe a month after i was off of vitex i got them tested and the results did come back as i had too high of lh and fsh hormone in my first video i made a for certain statement that vitex brought up my testosterone um but i don't know that for sure um I still have the paperwork, but as far as I could tell, it really didn't shoot at my testosterone like I said. I believe it did cause my body to overproduce androgens or male hormones. However, I don't think it really shot at my testosterone because I didn't have any problems like irregular periods, excess body hair or, or hair loss. So I just wanted to correct myself on that part. So after some digging, I ended up finding a girl who made a video about Sol Palmetto. And Sol Palmetto is a DHT blocker. To give you the rundown on what DHT is, I can't remember it 100% off the top of my head. DHT is dihydrotestosterone, which is a male hormone 
aka androgen, and is what testosterone converts to. DHT also stimulates your, whatever how you pronounce that, gland cells to produce more sebum, which is an oily secretion that everybody already has, and resulting in cystic acne if you're producing too much. Both men and women have testosterone and DHT, but females have a much smaller amount. An extract of salt palmetto berries may block the enzyme that converts testosterone to THT. As far as I could find, um, estrogen, high estrogen didn't really play a part in severe hormonal cystic acne. The main culprit will be testosterone. So sol palmetto comes like this. You can order them online. It's relatively cheap. I think for this I paid about maybe 12 bucks and it comes with 180 and it's 580 milligrams per capsule. Um, so the first week I started off with one capsule, uh, the second week I bumped it to two, the third week I bumped it to three, and the fourth week I bumped it to four, and I continue taking four from that point on. Um, I would say it took it for maybe eight weeks, a little bit more, it's been kind of a long time since I have done this. Um, but the reason why I don't recommend going straight into four capsules a day is because this kind of is like not just any supplement. It Your body will not like it if you jump straight into four per day. You can go ahead and do that, but I don't advise it. <laughs> and a tip for this is always eat it with a meal or some kind of snack because I guarantee this is going to make you constipated. I mentioned that in my first video. It's gonna make you constipated, so take it with you know, food, your breakfast, or get a fiber supplement or drink a lot of black coffee, I don't know. Another supplement that I tried out, but I can't say for sure if it helped me, is the painting and licorice. It's a Chinese herb and it does cost a little bit more than salt palmetto. I know it's pretty common for women to use who have hormonal conditions. So peony and licorice is a popular anti-androgen supplement. It's a Chinese herb. Um, the effectiveness seems to vary on Brand. According to NCIB, licorice affects the endocrine system because it contains isoflavones, phytoestrogens, which are chemicals found in plants that may mimic the effects of estrogen and relieve menopausal symptoms and menstrual disorders. Licorice may also reduce testosterone levels. That, to my knowledge, is also pretty popular for women who have PCOS. I have no idea, you know, because I think the main thing that works for me was salt palmetto. And for reference, for salt palmetto, I noticed I stopped getting new cystic acne around the fourth to fifth week and my skin started to actually heal and kind of, you know, all of them would go down, I would say by the sixth to seventh week. Um, I continued to take it after because I really wanted to make sure that <laughs> it wasn't going to be happening again. Um, by checking online, there seems to be a lot of like uh, super anti-androgen supplements that are available now back when I was going through my hormonal acne, um, I did not find anything like this. So if you're interested in finding something like this, if you know for sure that you need something like this, um, really, really please look into what's actually in these supplements. If you suspect that you have a hormonal imbalance of some kind or some kind of condition going on, you know you've had this for several years, really please go to your doctor and ask them to get your hormones tested. They're going to send you a lab to go do blood work and your results usually should be back pretty quick. Um, I don't know about now, the way things are going, um, but usually this is what you do. You go to your primary doctor and tell them you suspect you have a hormonal imbalance. Um, they might try to give you something for cystic acne like antibiotics or something, because that's what happened to me, but I didn't get the prescription. I knew I didn't need it. If you don't have insurance and you cannot physically go to a doctor, um, there are test kits online. There's only one really reputable place. It's called ZRT. However, they don't service a lot of areas in America and they are quite expensive. And there's also another service where you can purchase the, the kit online. You don't actually get a physical kit, but you purchase it and you go to a lab nearby and you do it there. And that's also pretty expensive. It runs between 150 to 400, 500 dollars. So it depends on what type of kit you want to go for, but that's also an option if you really cannot go see a doctor. So now I understand that not everybody's a dumb piss ant like I am and start taking a random hormonal supplement that caused their severe acne. 
I'm very lucky that I don't have a, I didn't have a pre-existing hormonal condition that causes because I know that's 10 times more frustrating, especially for women who are having fertility issues. So one of the main common conditions is PCOS. If you don't know what PCOS is, it's uh, one of the most common conditions that causes severe hormonal acne in women. Um, it's a hormonal disorder causing enlarged ovaries with small cysts on the outer edges. It doesn't just affect your skin, but your entire body. Other symptoms include irregular periods, excess hair growth or loss, and weight gain. Um, all those bearded women you see online in videos or in freak shows, they like almost 100% of the time have PCOS and they do not get it treated. I've seen a lot of people treat this condition naturally. I've seen people go on prescription medication for it and I've also seen people go on birth control like Yasmin to suppress the male hormones. If you suspect that you have this condition, I really suggest you go to your doctor and get tested if you are able to and kind of explore your options and see what's available you know i completely understand people wanting to go on birth control because it works fairly quick quicker than natural solutions um natural solutions can be a lot of trial and error and this condition really can affect your body very poorly so um please just go to your doctor if you suspect you have this condition so now referring to my earlier point about birth control if you notice that your acne and your hormonal issues only started after you you got on birth control um, you might want to consider changing your birth controls because they are a huge culprit in hormonal acne in a lot of women as well and that's why a lot of women kind of go through trial and error birth controls um, i know that yasmin is very popular for getting rid of acne um, but I think if you're kind of using it to mask symptoms and you don't really care about finding out what's actually causing your acne, um, I don't know. Like, I really suggest trying to figure out if you already have a, a pre-existing condition before you get on birth control. So other common conditions that can cause hormonal imbalances include thyroid issues such as hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, uh, primary ovarian insufficiency, that's a tongue twister, <laughs> ovarian cancer, and premenopause. As I expressed several times already, if you really suspect you have any type of condition, even if it's like common in your family, just please go to a doctor and f try to figure out what the fuck is going on. And if your doctor's not willing to work with you, I know there's a lot of doctors out there who are just like, oh, here's some antibiotics, you know, they're not really interested in really finding out what's wrong with you. You just switch doctors if you are able to. I understand not everybody's privileged enough to have health care, to have insurance. Um, but if you are able to, if you are able to, please go. Now I'm going to go over diet related acne, um, which is commonly going to be much less severe than hormonal acne will be. But it's still something I want to bring up. I know there's a lot of people who have pretty bad acne but it may not be specifically hormonal acne and I've also dealt with a little bit of this. A lot of doctors and dermatologists will say that diet is not linked to acne which to me has to be the fattest fucking lie. I mean I feel like it's not only being disingenuous but it's also really insulting the intelligence of your patients. I understand why people would not really think beyond this. Of course, you're going to trust a doctor who has been in school for several years, but also a lot of them don't want to go through the trouble of, you know, trying to figure out what's going on. A lot of doctors' motives just give you what you need in the moment and get you out and get the other patient in. And this is not like, this is where I'm afraid of coming off as like some anti-drug, anti-doctor person, which I'm not, but this unfortunately is very common for a lot of people. It's a pretty simple concept. You eat like shit, your body's going to react like shit. Your body needs, you know, not organic, not vegan. Your body needs a basic, nutritious lifestyle to be healthy. If you eat junk food all the time, if you eat fast food all the time, and I'm someone who loves junk food, okay? Um, your body, not only your skin is gonna be affected, but your organs are gonna be affected and your mood is gonna be affected. It, you know, it's not just skin. So the essential vitamins for skin are C, E, A, zinc, and selenium. Skin is a last organ to receive nutrients, but the first to show signs of deficiency. Certain foods can raise your blood sugar more quickly than others. When your blood sugar rises quickly, it causes the body to release a hormone called insulin. Having excess insulin in your blood can cause your oil glands to produce 
more oil, aka sebum, increasing your risk of acne. The same thing can occur with excess androgens. It causes your oil glands to produce more sebum and lead to acne. Consuming a large amount of sugary foods or foods that are highly processed leads to high insulin levels and high blood sugar spikes in your body pump up the production of insulin, which are also puts stress on your pancreas. To bring down the spikes, your body responds by producing androgen hormones, which further aggravates acne. When this happens for an extended period, your body begins to lose sensitivity to insulin, causing insulin resistance. Another point I wanted to make is gut issues can also play a big part in getting acne. I don't know how severe it can really get, but if you have digestive issues, if your family has a history of digestive issues, I know that your gut can really be in poor shape if you really eat like crap for many, many years. I'm not really going to get too much into it, but it is something to look into. Maybe look into more gut friendly foods or just try not to eat processed foods so much. Okay, so let's go over to the most common medical prescription drugs that are used for treating severe acne. The first one is Accutane, but I recently found out that Accutane isn't even legal anymore in the US. So I have no idea if, it, if they are still providing it under a different name. If anyone that's curious, if you do have access in your area to it, if you want more information on Accutane, here's what I have. So Accutane is a vitamin A derivative. Vitamin A can build up in your tissue. When you have too much vitamin A in your body, you can develop vitamin A toxicity. It, be, it can begin a short period of time when your body begins receiving too much vitamin A and will become chronic after a longer time. The more chronic it is, there is a higher chance that you will develop liver damage, uh, osteoporosis, excess buildup of calcium and pressure on your brain. Um, I've heard quite a lot of people have had um, not only physical problems, but mental issues as well. I've heard of digestive issues with Accutane. So, but I still felt the need to bring it up because there are a lot of people who shill for Accutane. Um, they say it's a medical cleanse and I'm like, the, what? <laughs> if you have too much testosterone, how is an uh, influx of vitamin A going to bring down your testosterone? That makes absolutely no sense to me. Um, like I've said before, like I've said a bajillion times, acne is a symptom. <laughs> it's a symptom of an underlying condition, whether minor or major. So the uncommon side effects of Accutane include increased cholesterol, joint and muscle problems, pressure on your brain. So that's just something to keep in mind. So this is just my opinion. I'm no doctor and if you want to try antibiotics, it's your choice. However, you know, I do think they're the lesser of two evils when they're held up against something like Accutane. I know the topical treatments can help a lot with any inflammation that you may have and it may be great in combination with Let's say you have hormonal acne or you have digestive acne, you know, it might be good to kind of calm down the exterior while you're working on the inside. Antibiotics for acne are prescribed to help reduce bacteria and fight inflammation. There's topical antibiotics as well as oral pills. Um, so now let's move on to the emotional dilemma of having severe acne. So um, my severe acne did affect me and it's even though it's been more than four years now, I still am affected by it. I'm still very insecure about the scars that I have now. Um, I'm still, I still think of myself as ugly. Um, it's very hard and I'm not gonna sit here and say, oh, you're beautiful no matter what, because let's be real, you're gonna feel ugly as fuck no matter what anybody says. Um, the main thing I can say is just accept this feeling you don't have to fight it you don't need to berate yourself you don't need to beat yourself up and one thing for sure if your friends are commenting on your skin if your friends are making fun of you bitch those are not your friends okay because i had one friend who used to comment on my skin all the time and it just and fear it just it not only did it make me mad but it it was like you're supposed to be my friend it's like i'm already feeling like shit and you're over here berating me for something that I don't even really know what's going on. So if you do, you know, this may surface who's the fake bitches in your squad. Please do not remain friends with anybody like that. If there's family that are commenting on it, try not to talk to them if you are able to. I know a lot of people live with their family, but if you don't, it might be best to cut them off. And I don't necessarily have really a cure-all for this. Everybody's body is going to be different. Everybody's emotional well-being is going to be different. Please try not to beat yourself up. Just 
I would say use any of the, the anger that you have towards yourself, any of the energy that is going to go into beating yourself up, please just use that as motivation to work towards a solution to find out what's going on in your body. What I, what I kind of did to get myself through the day, the days was I looked forward to the day where I could look back when I wouldn't have this acne and you know I've been at that point for a while now and it is nice to not have to deal with that anymore and it, I'm not as insecure nearly as insecure as I used to be it's still very hard even when I get one pimple I get really insecure but it's something you know you have to take day by day um at the time that this acne was going on I it was very hard I can't, I pretty much denied almost all plans with my friends and unfortunately I did end up losing some friends because I just refused to go out and I didn't tell them what was going on. I didn't think it was worth to, to tell them what was going on um, and it just it really was not an easy time and back then I was doing like video diaries on every day from beginning to kind of the end. I did delete them though. I still do wish I had them so I could answer them at some point. But so another thing, if you find yourself dwelling a lot, try to pick up a very basic, easy hobby. If you haven't already, like drawing, something where you don't have to force yourself to go outside, um, where you don't have to convince yourself to do something that you really don't want to do. You know, just reading, drawing, going for walks, exercising, meditating, stuff like that. I know it's pretty generic, but. Um, it's very easy to sit around all day and mope. Simple message here is please be kind to yourself.